Chad here from CNR Reviews. We got a new gun. It's a Ruga. And uh, I had said in the Caltech PF9 video, uh, I believe the Caltech PF9 Sucks review, which we are currently, um, we're actually working with the manufacturer to see if we can get it fixed. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not going to destroy it yet. Not quite yet. We're going to see what happens with Caltech's customer service. Um, and that is because we have had so many responses. But this is the Ruger LC9. I promised I was going to get it so we can do some comparison videos. Uh, pretty lightweight, subcompact, 9mm. And it's from Ruger. This is a basically a copy of the Kel-Tec 9. Um, but again, I think uh, Ruger has taken a weapon that has been in the market before and made it better. We're going to go and go over some features that this thing has. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, just basically first impressions of the gun. This gun has not been fired yet. Um, I have taken it apart and cleaned it. And I actually already have a couple things I'd like to say to Ruger that I'm just I'm kind of unhappy with. Um, I've noticed that some of the takedowns and stuff, I don't know why when they're copying, copying these other brands that they just can't make the takedown easy. Um, this little notch here, you have to push down and then you have to push this pin with a, with a provided little goofy ass key. And uh, then the pin comes out. Unlike the kel -Tec, the kel -Tec, you just take a, um, a bullet casing and pull it out. Um, but it says in there, in the manual, you can just push this down with your thumb or with something soft. This was so tight, guys, I could not get it down. Now, it may loosen up after we fire a few hundred rounds yeah. out of that, guys. Like, like the... Like the 2245s from Ruger, I mean, mine loosened up a lot after about 500 yeah, rounds. But it just couldn't be easy the very first time, and I ended up uh, scratching the polymer like a moron. I took a butter knife to it because I couldn't get even a toothbrush plastic to push this thing down. Yeah, yeah you guys see that right there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, so I actually scratched it a little bit. Um, not a real big deal. This isn't a super expensive gun, and... Um, the, the other complaint that I have is the blackening or bluing that they put on here. There's already some wear. And this is brand new right from the factory. I haven't even holstered this gun. It hasn't even been in my pocket yet. Um, I literally just got it from the store yesterday and took it and uh, cleaned it up and stuff. So if you guys can see that. Let's go ahead and go over um, basic quality of the weapon. This is a little bit heavier than the, than the PF9, which we will be doing um, comparison videos to the PF9 and, and, the, and the Ruger LCP, and I'm, I'm sorry, LC9. Um, like I said, it is a copy of the PF9, but the machining marks aren't there like the PF9s. It's beautiful machining. The polymer is really nice. Ruger redid the back, so it's nice and ergonomic for your hand. It fits in your hand. It's a naturally well-pointing weapon. It's smooth. It doesn't have chunks taken out of it like the kel -Tec. Yeah, um, when you open it up the weapon and you look inside, everything's nice and smooth. Um, the barrel, you can tell, is higher quality. The, the guide rods are higher quality. I'm sorry, the guide, the guide rod's plastic, so who knows that higher quality. But the, um, the, the, the spring, the guide rod spring, is, is really nice. It's way different than the kel -Tec. It's a lot easier to put together. And uh, it does have an adjustable rear sight, which we'll be talking about. Um, there's the sight picture on the gun. You guys can see that. Zoom in a little bit, John. There you go. But you know, it's got a nice sight picture, and I'm I'm impressed with that so far. So there you go. You get that, Ryan? Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about some features that the gun has. Um, first of all, uh, off, we'll say it's got a seven-round mag, so you can carry this with eight rounds total. Seven in the mag, one in the chamber. Um, really nice Ruger mag. Nice base plate on the mag, and then it does come with a flat one. But I'm a fan of having all of my all of my fingers on the gun. The um, the pinky just fits really nice, and that is also something that we'll talk about that the Keltec does not do. Um, other than that, the uh, the trigger trigger is actually very nice and smooth. The trigger is deactivated right now, and if you can see the hammer in there, it's actually pushed all the way forward. Now if I cock this weapon, you'll see it actually charges that hammer in basically single action. The catch with the gun though is that it's a double action pull. She does have a magazine disconnect, meaning if you drop the mag, the trigger doesn't work. If I throw that magazine in there, you'll see I have a really long trigger pull. 
and there you go. So it's got that double action trigger pull. It does still cock the hammer a little bit, but it kind of half charges it. Um, very much, uh, it's similar to a single latch. It's kind of in between the two. So, like I said, magazine disconnect. I don't know how some people hate it. Some people like it. Um, and I can definitely understand some people's concerns if, for some reason, the mag gets dropped. You still have a round in the chamber. Trigger doesn't work. It fully deactivates that trigger. And the only thing this gun's good for is hitting the crap out of somebody. Um, which can work. Which can work. Um, the trigger pull is smooth. Um, it's very similar to the to the Kel Tech. Uh, it does have a couple redundancies, and we'll talk about that. So not only does it have that that mag disconnect, not only does it have the long double action pull, but it also has an external safety. So here's the safety right here, guys. And red means fire. On this, white is safe. It's got it's kind of 1911-ish. Uh, it's it's not quite the same as having like that huge, nice safety like a 1911 has. But it's like a super small version yeah, of it. It's like a like... super small version. It's not that difficult to slap down. Um, it's a little bit more positive. You know, it feels good when you hit it. You know, you're hitting it. Um, a lot of people don't like safeties on the exterior of weapons, and then others really do. And I would have to say this would be a great beginner's carry gun. If you're just starting out for the first time and you don't quite feel comfortable with the full fundamentals of shooting and you're going to train, you can train with this very easily, um, especially carrying in, um, in uh, was it position one? Or, I'm sorry, condition one. Um, and basically condition one is around in the chamber, the gun is racked, and it's ready to go. You can throw your safety on. That's condition one, guys, with the safety on, round, chambered. With this gun, with that double action pull, though, you can hypothetically carry in condition zero, which is external safety off, off. with that long double action pull there. Um, you know, you can, you can still carry condition zero if you wanted to. Sure. And, and we'll talk about that, actually, when we compare these um, to other guns, because other guns don't have that safety. They just have that long trigger pull to help them. Um, just another redundant safety thing that Ruger's had, and some of the stuff is okay, but to me this gun has too many safety features, and that just means too many little parts, extra parts, that could fail in the future. I'm going to go ahead and rack around in here, and this is a uh, Hornady uh, hollow point. Now this gun's never been to the range. We're going to see if we can actually get it to uh, uh, rack or uh, hollow point even. It's a chamber. Oh, chambered it, no problem. I'm going to throw the safety on. And look what popped up. We got this loaded went up. This huge, huge bullet indicator. And I don't know if Ryan can also show you, but right here on the uh, the barrel, there's also a second bullet indicator. A we visual can actually one. see the round inside the chamber, yeah. guys. So that is something, you know, I know the SIG 238 has that where you can see the round in the chamber. That's kind of redundant to me. That means basically they could have taken this out, this loaded one up, and it just, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem to bother you when you're looking down the sights. Um, I can't see this. And I know there is uh, guys on YouTube that have basically filed stuff down on here to actually remove it. Um, kind of gives the gun a mini mohawk. Yeah, like I mean, it's it's got a little tapered edge here, so it shouldn't catch on anything. But maybe we'll do actually some drawing techniques, actually draw from a holster or pocket and see if that does hinder the weapon. Um, but, you know, that's just one other feature that this weapon has. I'm going to take it off safety. You definitely, you know, you need to train with that safety and without. So, other than that, guys, that's the first impressions of the Ruger LC9. It definitely has some positives. It definitely has a couple um, questionable issues that, um, you know, we'll play it out the range and see how it does. So, uh, you know, like I said, it is. it does feel a tad bit heavier than some of the other competition, and... Um, yeah, there's your little carrying bag that Ruger has. But other than that, guys, um, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. And if you got any questions, we're here to help you out. We're still on the quest to find the best uh, carry gun, and this is just going to go into the arsenal. And we'll do some comparison videos next, and we'll do it per weapon comparing to this, so that way you can actually pick the weapons you like. So Yeah, and unfortunately we can't do a shooting comparison between the LC9 and the PF9, because the PF9 no longer works. Yeah, so we will be talking about that too in the comparison. So guys, um, you know, if you have any questions, again, shoot them our way. And thanks a lot for watching. This is Chad and Ryan from CNR Reviews.